Good evening ladies and gentlemen, how are we getting on? Welcome back to a brand new camp build. And today we are working on a cosy little cottage build just to the south of Morgantown. So it was not my original plan, I tried a couple of other things first, it didn't really work out. But uh, on the whole I think this has actually come out better than the original idea would have anyway. So, pretty pleased with this. But, let's jump in and take a look at the build, shall we? Okay then, so chilling out on the porch, let's have a little look at where we are on the map. Quite easy to find this spot, we've got a nice little curve of the road on the map there that marks quite nicely where their camp actually is. See, just south of Morgantown there. Vault 76 over this way, much closer in line with Morgantown than I ever think it is. There we go, and Bolton Greens is just over there, just up the road. So, nice spot this one. We've got a nice and open area, a little bit of road, so it's a nice spot to build a little house on. It works quite well, looks like it belongs. So we'll shove my camp unit out of the way there. Start getting some foundations in. The first thing we could do here is line them up with the curb, but in hindsight, it might have been a little better if I'd actually started a little closer to the corner there. There's a, unfortunately, it's a little too far over to the left when it comes to adding the garage on. This tree at the back there is uh, unfortunately not bulldozable, so it's kind of problematic. Um, it gets right in the way of the garage on the side of the building, but. Had I moved it over even half a foundation, that would have solved the problem, but... Hindsight's 2020 and all that. Unfortunately, we've got a magically disappearing foundation there, but it won't be a problem. We'll be taking that out later. I'll get these foundations in. So initially, I went for a 4x3 here, but the end result will actually be a 4x4 four four for the main structure, at least. And we'll divide it up with uh, some sort of offset rooms in just a moment. Flip that around. There we go. So we take this little corner off the front and get a porch in. So this is going to be kind of the feature as you approach the front of the building. So it's a good place to start working out from. That in there. Try and turn it the right way around might help. Nice. There we go. And we shall get some walls in. So we're working with the contemporary set again. And this one is once again back in the atomic shop. So worth having a little look for that if you haven't already picked up. It's definitely one of the nicer sets. Windows pretty nice on it. The whole wall style works really well. Looks like it belongs in uh, 76 along with the existing structures and it's really cool to work with. Nice balance of clean but not too clean, which I like a lot. I'll get some more of these walls in. I'm not going to have windows on this side because we will have an extra structure tucked on the side of the, with the garage, but tuck those on and we will put some extra windows along the back, but not just yet. So I have a little look at it from the front angle here. This is the main point that we want to kind of build out from. Get a general idea of where we're going. It looks okay. I'll add an extra of foundations on the back because it's just not quite big enough yet. There we go. These in. It's always got to be slightly uncooperative. <laughs> a little bit laggy as well. So, get some internal walls in, so I've got an idea of the floor plan, I know where I'm going with this. I'm going to use the old doubling up the doors technique, so we can wallpaper both sides of the walls. So, it works with, I think, most of the building sets. If you just use doorways rather than walls, you can snap them back to back, as long as you've got a floor on either side of them. Which we have here, and then we can just change those out for walls instead, and we'll be able to wallpaper both sides. Don't mind that top corner, by the way, it's uh, going to get changed in a moment. Just get this front room sorted out. It's actually going to be our dining room over there. There we go. It's the rough floor plan laid out. We'll get some stairs put in here. Want to change these walls up? There you go. Let's see how to do it there. Nice and easy. Replace them out, and we have walls. Do the same thing on the other side. You're all good. Not the biggest fan of the staircase still, I would like a few more style options on this, and it's a bit temperamental. If you need to take it back out again, often you have to pull half the build down, which is very annoying. But, I do want the staircase off to the side rather than the centre of the floor, so... We've got to use what we've got to use. Let's get these last couple of walls in, and head upstairs. We're going to repeat the doubling up procedure up here. Some windows on the side, and get the floors in. I'll change these out for uh, different floor textures in a bit, but this will get us going for now. Excuse the slightly strange sound, by the way, I had a nuke going off very loudly, it was quite annoying. <laughs> Wonderfully timed as always. So there's the outer walls on, and once again we'll get these doubled up doorways in to mark out the internal spaces. 
And there we go. Flip those around. They do go in back to back quite quickly once you get the hang of it, which is cool. There we go. I'll actually end up taking a lot of these back out and making feature walls using the outside texture of the walls. Just because of some of the problems we're going to encounter in just a bit. But for now, so we can see what we're working with. Get that garage door in downstairs. And a doorway over the little stairwell there. And we're good to go. So, speaking of the little issues I was having, when you double up these walls, it works fine on the lower level, but if you want to put a half wall on top, you can't double those up, so we can see. It's uh, facing one way or the other, which is kind of annoying because you can't wallpaper it properly, it doesn't match. And it's also annoying because it's not the same thickness either, so something to bear in mind if you want arched roofs over the top of uh, any of these double-sided walls. So We'll have to work around that in a moment and basically use a few external surfaces as feature walls. But, for the moment, having a look outside, not too happy with the look of this just yet. The front looks a little bit stubby, and I don't like these really wide, low windows either, so... We'll swap the front wall out for full-sized walls, try something a little different with the roofs. Where we solve the uh, half-wall issue as well. That looks much better. I still don't like the roofs on the right here. The slope just isn't even, it runs too far back for me. And I don't like these windows either. And again, this room is a little too small as well, so everything needs to change. So we'll whip this front end off, get floors back in. When it wants to play ball. There we go. Pull that angle one off as well. Get these roofs out of the way. Leave that for a minute. And we'll get some half walls in. So here I actually discovered something cool. I did try out these full-size ones, but I do want a different height here. So yeah, that does look good. Actually reminds me of a house I saw many years ago, actually. But not quite what I'm looking for. So we're going to pull those large ones out and replace them with the half walls that I discovered at about this point in time. Didn't know we had these in this particular set. That's very cool. It's with these singular windows in. And they match up with the tall ones much better than the wide windows do. So I quite like that. But that means we can have a little bit of an angled roof. Change the heights and elevations a little bit. Make it look a bit more interesting. So, get a roof on this corner. There we go. And although I put a corner one in here, we're going to change that in a moment. Get a bit more headroom inside. Let's have a quick look. Yeah, it's coming together now. Looking much better. Stick a wall in here. Find the right one. There we go. Nice. So, we're going to pull that corner one off and just use a regular angled wall. And these sloped ones. Because then we've got a little bit more headroom on the inside there, which is much better. So I was thinking here of using uh, the double wall technique again, as we can see. Unfortunately, this does mean that we'll then have wallpaper showing on the outside of the building, given the angled roof. So, not quite what I wanted from that. So, again, it's a problem we're going to see on the back in a minute as well. So, I'll uh, make my mind up and just pull that wall back out and make it a regular single thickness wall and we use the external texture as a feature wall on the inside and have it contrasting with the other ones. Let's look at that roof in, whip these spare walls out. Change that doorway over. Nice, there we go. And it'll solve another problem in a minute as well. So looking towards the back, there's another slight issue we came up with that we'll have a look at in a moment. But I want to change the shape of this back edge because for the moment it's very big, square and boxy. So I want to create a more interesting angle on this. So I'm going to put a little arch in the middle there. Have a nice kind of ridge down the centre of the building. Initially did want to put these corner roofs on the edge. But um, if you do that, you'll find the triangular wall pieces that you need to plug up the gaps don't look too good inside most of the time because they've got a little kind of um, I don't know what you call it sort of fascia board on them which looks fine on the outside but inside a building it looks a bit ridiculous so with the exception of certain places anyway so I generally wanted to avoid that which is why we went for this ridge down the centre that we're now going to put the uh, triangles on in a moment drop these flat roofs on the edge but again I'll be tweaking the shape here as it's still a little too square that gives me an idea of what I'm working with these are the triangular pieces, I mean. See what I mean? They look fine on the outside, but those white uh, faces on the edge don't look good on the inside, so they will need changing. 
So back around the back, you can see that little point makes the thing look far more interesting. We've still got some very, very square corners on here. It looks very, very boxy. So we're going to cut these corners off and make it a little bit more interesting to look at. So out with these two walls, off with this roof as well. There we go. And we'll get some half walls in and drop a roof on the top. So, can you use a sloped roof here? Mix up the shape again, make it a bit different to the front. Get this triangle one on the side. There we go. Slant so one on. Plenty of headroom for when you come up the stairs as well, which is good. But once again, we can see we're going to have wallpaper showing on the outside of the build. So, that's not ideal. We'll have to knit back around inside, whip these internal walls off. And there we go. So, in the stairwell as well, we'll have to have the outside surface as feature wall again. There we go. So this section here is a little too tall from the outside and a little sticks out a bit, so we'll have to change that. But I'm just going to quickly plug these gaps up. This is one of the few places where having one of those triangles inside does actually work. Let's uh, plug this up with a regular wall. There's our feature going all the way to the roof. And again, we're going to have to use a half size wall here again. So since we can't put two up there, that's always going to have to come off. And the external surface will have to come around two of the walls. But we can work with that. So, as I said, this section just sticks out and is very, very square and blocky, so that's going to have to be changed. I actually swapped out that left corner for uh, a slope roof, which is going to get changed back again to a corner roof. <laughs> Chopping and changing, but uh, we've already kind of done that, so. We are going to pull that out, drop this corner one in, it's half one in rather. And initially, I was going to put this corner roof in. But as we go around the other side, we'll see that the lower section will just clip through the wall and stick out into the room at the top of the stairs, which doesn't look very good. There you go, sit there. So some build order aside with getting that triangular piece in, that just doesn't look very good. So we'll go with a regular sloped piece instead. Actually works out better in here anyway, gives you a bit more headroom. Get the roof off. I could now put that in. Now we'll get the slope one on. Sorted. So there we go, looking much, much better on the whole. As I say, that top corner that now sticks up in a very ugly fashion will get swapped out for a corner one in a bit and look much neater. So now we just need to sort of repeat the procedure on this side so it mostly matches, but works slightly differently because the rooms are a little different on the inside. So walls off, roofs off. We'll get these small windows in on the side and repeat with the next section as well. This is going to be our bathroom, so it's going to look a little bit different. Excuse the fog, by the way. I did have a bit of a battle getting some decent weather with this build, but uh, managed for most of it. <laughs> Just this last bit. So, little angled wall on here. So we can snap that roof on. And because this will again have internal walls on the outside, we'll go back to using the external surface as a feature wall once again, which actually works quite nicely in a bathroom, I think. The sort of uh, wooden cladding effect does work quite nicely for a bathroom vibe, I like it. So we're going to extend that all the way around because it's going to look a little better than just having the one wall at the end. There we go. Much more like a bathroom. So, that is the main structure. We just need to make this bottom bit look a little bit more interesting. We'll get a little porch on the back here for the back garden. Just drop a couple on there. Make sure we've got a doorway in. Not much point in having a porch if we can't get out of the house. Nice. Couple of railings on there. Couple of railings around the front. And we'll jump on to decorate and do the tour. As I say, I did build the garage here, but I'll talk you through a bit of that in just a moment because I didn't record the final version so it's fairly simple anyway the stairs in and let's have a look round so there we go finished product pretty pleased with how this came out we've got uh, a lot of decoration here we've managed to use the whole build budget every little bit of it so very very full build this one the white picket fences I like the look of there as well you can see the garage poking around the corner as well um, those white picket fences don't actually snap together, which is sort of a blessing and a curse. It means you can kind of run them in whatever angle you like. 
but at the same time it means you've also got to place each piece manually which does take quite some time they're an atomic shop item they come and go so if you do want to pick them up they are available from time to time got a little player vending area on the side of the house here i realized they hadn't put anywhere inside for it but there isn't really anywhere inside that looks like it would belong so not a bad little spot for it there kind of under the shelter of the trees which is quite nice have a little look around this place in the evening in a bit as well because it looks absolutely awesome really happy with the lighting on this nice little garden out the back so kind of disguised by the rest of the fence we've got a little gate here there we go would like to put some extra decoration in this sort of front garden and stuff but maybe do the back garden a little bit more as well but unfortunately as i say we're at the build budget as it is so what can we do I'm kind of hoping that, that some of the grass will pop back in once uh, I serve a hop as well. So, fingers crossed on that one. Nice little seating area out on the porch, a couple of plants. And I think this is my favourite room in the house, the uh, sitting room here. With the lodge fireplace and the couch that goes with it as well. It's again, Atomic Shop stuff that comes and goes. It's quite a recent addition. It looks really, really nice like that. A couple more of the reclining chairs there as well that have an awesome animation. Very fond of those. Yeah, nice little homely, cosy living room there. On into the dining room. So again, we're on some of the more rustic stuff. Got the Thanksgiving display cases there, display dresses. But unfortunately, no budget left to put anything in them. Not that I'm sure what I would have put in them anyway. It kind of needs plates, which isn't really an option. So, the kitchen. Tried a couple of bits and pieces out here a little differently, but mixed success. But... Looks alright, quite happy with that. like having the cooking station in the middle. I'll have a look around the garage. So I've got the paint job from the new season, the wallpaper job rather, which is quite cool. You can see we have a little step up there to get through the door. It's because the ground in this back corner, sort of behind me, is starting to rise up a bit, so I had to pop the foundations up a little bit. And then it was just a case of snapping the rest back to it, making sure it wasn't too high up to get through the door. And uh, building up from there wasn't too difficult really. So I left the doors off inside, partly for budgetary concerns, also partly because it's quite compact in here, so the doors kind of get in the way anyway, it just looks a little better without them. But the doorways are nice, so I like the look of that. Plenty of decoration. One bit of reef sticking through there that's a bit annoying, but what can we do? <laughs> On to the bathroom. Mixture of the Slocum's Joe and the tiles and stuff like that all make for a nice bathroom effect, along with the uh, light blue wood on the walls as well, so really pleased with how that came out. So we want a bit more bathroom furniture, but we'll be getting some, I think, in the not too distant future. On to the master bedroom. I do like the look of this place, it's come out quite nicely. I like the curtains, really make a uh, place look way more complete. Gone for a nice little feature wall on the back, since we don't have that issue anymore. And this time done it with wallpaper rather than with the external surface. <laughs> Not see a great deal out the front with the tree there, but it does look quite nice nonetheless. I wish that bed had some bedding still though. But it does look right in here, so it's cool. On to what is more or less a kid's bedroom. So I wanted a kind of brighter coloured bolder wallpaper, and I'm a bit picky with the ones we've got. I don't like a lot of them, but this one's alright. And our legendary run completed poster on the side there, some bobbleheads and some magazines on the side. A little place to chill out, plenty of plushies. Yeah, looks good. Take a little swing back downstairs and have a look around the garden. Which, on a reflection, I might tweak a bit. I'm not entirely happy with where the decontamination arch is in the garden, but we'll see that in just a moment. Swing around the corner. A little bit of dead space under the stairs here, and I wasn't sure what to do with it, but a little writing desk and safe in there would go quite nicely, make some use out of the space under the stairs. Had to rug glitch it in, but what can we do? <laughs> Barbecue, a nice little animation. Looks quite cool at night, that. And there we go. Mostly crops, there's a water purifier around the corner. A few little bits and pieces of the succulents and plants, just to give it a bit of life, a bit of colour. Yep, plenty of blackberries, a few gourds, and a little bit of corn as well, everything you could need. So I wanted to put the decontamination arch out here as a kind of water feature, but it was a bit picky about where it would actually let me to place it because of the slope on the ground. So I tried to hide it a bit with the, uh, uh, well, the cranberry bog plants, the sundew plants. But unfortunately it hasn't come quite the way I wanted it to, so I may adjust this on down the line. 
Needs the grass will sprout back there. <laughs> but otherwise, pretty happy with how this looks. A little sitting area out here as well with some of the reclining chairs because those things are just awesome. Absolutely had to use them any opportunity I got. Definitely one of my favourite recent additions. We'll take a little loop back through the house. And I'll we'll take a little tour around in the evening. As I say, particularly pleased with how the lighting's turned out on this. Those uh, hanging lights you can see at the top there are from the Daily Ops and they are really, really good. Cage lights, I think they're called. Very, very handy. Nice warming, not too bright, and reasonably easy to place. And the smaller ones tuck out of sight quite nicely as well, so great combination. But, gotta close the gate. And I'll have a little swing around in the evening. <laughs> I really like how this looks in the evening. Nice little bit of warming light spilling out from the porch there and out of the windows. Trees just kind of concealing the build just a little bit, just enough to uh, sort of soften the edges a bit, which is really nice. Like different heights and angles as well, make it look a nice, interesting structure. It's cool. We'll head on inside and move around a little bit quicker this time. Now we've already had one look around. Get through the gate. Unfortunately, I think the green light coming off the... Uh, Benders there is not going to look particularly spectacular. I might have to try the Halloween ones out actually instead of these ones, see if they give out a, a better look. But uh, I've got them turned off anyway so we don't get uh, interrupted during the tour. Head on up and in. See the light coming from these uh, hanging cage lights is really, really nice. Two different sizes as well, as I say, which is very, very convenient. The fireplace and the lodge furniture and the reclining chairs really make for a nice, homely, welcoming little living room here. And the uh, stone wallpaper there looking really good, making a nice little feature wall again, and contrasting or matching rather the fireplace on the other side, which is cool. Lights are a bit of a battle for the dining room though, unfortunately. The standard lamps are a bit too bright, but the alternatives were way more obnoxious. Quite happy with the kitchen. Nice to get the chance to use that breeze block wallpaper, as we're uh, stuck with a fairly industrial look anyway, given our limited options, but what can we do? Definitely looking forward to getting some more kitchen options available. Glad I got the symptomatic tucked in the garage as well, which is cool. I think it's very, very useful. We're going to mind our head on the way back to the kitchen. And I've got a couple of the Slocum's Joe uh, bar pieces just on the side there for some extra shelving, because unfortunately the metal cabinets we've got available, the stash boxes, for some reason I cannot get those things to snap properly. So, needs must. Nice cozy little writing desk under the stairs. A little shifty around the garden. Really like the animation on these barbecues as well. The functional cooking stations, which is cool. Pop up in the Atomic Shop from time to time. Well worth a pick up if you can. Make for a nice change. Much like that mine car cooking station inside that I really like as well. Not a vast amount going on in the garden in the evening, but does the job. One drawback to this location is I do seem to get a lot of scorch spilling out from Morgantown and uh, the general direction of Bolton Green as well and attacking the place, which is slightly annoying, but... They are relatively low level, so it's nothing a shotgun blast doesn't deal with. A little look around the upstairs. Lighting up here looks pretty cool as well, I'm quite happy with it. A bit of contrast between the dark wood and the light wood on the sides there. Little paintings up. Nuka Cola lights bleeding through the wall, unfortunately, which is slightly annoying, but not much we can do about that. Clean looking bathroom. Getting this to look right without being too bright was a challenge because I did want a white light for the bathroom, but most of those are very, very bright. Cycling lights would do the job, but they leave you with trailing wires, so it's kind of a no-win there. There we go. Nice, warm, homely-looking master bedroom. Definitely wanted that sort of country cottage vibe, which I think I pulled off reasonably well. Quite happy with it. There we go. Kids' bedroom. Again, looking very, very warm and cosy. I do like the little Nuka Cola light spinning around there. I say, I'm fortunate that it goes through the wall, but what can we do? Yeah, pretty happy with this one. Just realised I haven't put any lights at the top of the stairs, though. So best be careful on the way down. <laughs> Mind you, I don't think I've got the budget for it, so what can we do? <laughs> there we go. Nice little country cottage just outside of Morgantown. So, do hope you folks enjoyed that one. 
If you did, please consider dropping likes and subs for me. It's always very, very much appreciated. Social media links, merch store, and channel memberships are also available down below the video if you're interested in supporting the channel in that way. It's humongously appreciated. It helps out a very, very great deal. So massive thanks to everyone who's done that already. And if you get a chance to join us for the live streams as well, playing a little more Fallout next week, we're going to pick those up, as well as jumping on to Horizon Zero Dawn, pushing on with that main story, and Prey as well on Wednesday, which should be fun for a bit of uh, spooky season fun. <laughs> so I do hope you can make those. For now, I'll say thank you very much for watching. I look forward to speaking to you all very, very soon.